Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is in continuation with the ovarian tumor series. This is the part 2 of germ cell tumors where I shall be discussing about teratoma in detail. Okay, We'll be looking at uh, the types of teratoma, the morphological features of teratoma and a bit about prognosis of teratomas. So, let's quickly recap what we had learnt in the earlier sessions. Ovarian tumors are classified into surface epithelial stromal tumors, germ cell tumors, sex cord stromal tumors, metastatic tumors and miscellaneous tumors. I so far have covered surface epithelial tumors and part of germ cell tumors, right? So, in this part, we'll be discussing about teratomas in detail. So, as I told you in the uh, previous session, we had discussed about dysgeminoma, embryonal carcinoma, yolk sac tumor, and choriocarcinoma. Now, we will look into the tumors of totipotent germ cells, which differentiates into embryonic structures. That's teratoma, which is further classified into mature, immature, and specialized teratoma. Now, what is this teratoma? So, let's get back to some historical aspects. Rudolf Virchow, who is considered as father of pathology, he, while examining some of the tumors of ovary, found that some of them were bizarre, which contained various components like teeth, you know, hair and other organ tissue. And then he called these tumors or he found these tumors are monstrous one. And that's why he named and labeled these tumors as teratomas. So, teratoma is basically a Greek terminology which means, which is, a, which is a combination of teras and oma. Teras means monster and oma, you all know that it is tumor or swelling. So, teratoma is basically, so teratoma basically meant monstrous tumor, that's a Greek terminology. So, these are the tumors which contain recognizable mature or immature cells or tissues which belong to more than one germ cell layer. You know, the germ cell layers are ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. So, these are the tumors which contain more than one germ cell layer. Sometimes, all the three germ cell layers can be seen. As we understood from the classification, teratomas originates from the totipotential germ cells, which can differentiate into any cell type found in the body, right? So, majority of teratomas arises from the ovum after the first meiotic division, while the remainder, you know, they arise before the first division. So, these tumors contain variable amount of bone, epithelium, muscle, fat, nerve and other tissues in a helter-skelter fashion. So, the classification of teratoma is pretty simple, you know, it is classified into mature teratoma, immature teratoma and monodermal or highly specialized teratomas. The mature teratomas are the ones which are benign, immature teratomas are the malignant ones and these are specialized teratomas, monodermal or highly specialized teratomas. Now, we look into what is mature teratoma. These teratomas, that is mature teratomas are often cystic, you know, and they differentiate principally along the Dermal lines, and that's why they create a cystic tumor which is lined by squamous epithelium, which is a ectodermal derivative, right? These are the tumors which are found most often in young women. They are often discovered incidentally, and if they are symptomatic, they have I mean, these patients will have abdominal pain. So, one of the rare manifestations of benign teratoma is paraneoplastic limbic encephalitis. Now, what does this mean? So, this means in the patient of teratoma, the manifestation, you know, can be so unusual that they present with mental and or behavioral changes, which is of acute onset. Now, why does this happen? That's because the immune system of our body is exposed to mature brain tissue, which is found within the teratoma, right? And once the immune system is exposed to the brain tissue, antibodies are formed against the N-methyl deaspartate receptor or the NMDA receptor. And this is the reason for the clinical manifestations in these cases. Not all teratomas will have these manifestations. It's a very, very rare manifestation. Remember, paraneoplastic limbic encephalitis. So, note that the symptoms may remit following the removal of the tumor. So, grossly, teratomas are often less than around 10 centimeters in size. They have a very smooth external surface, most often unilateral, but can be, you know, uh, 10 to 15 percent of the cases, they can be bilateral. They are, as I told you, unilocular cyst, which contains hair and sebaceous material, which is a thick 
oily and greasy material and that's also called pultaceous material. You also see this protuberance in one of the part of the cyst wall inside, which is called as Rokitansky protuberance. Okay, so this basically is a white or yellowish nodule which contains adipose tissue and or sebaceous components. So that is Rokitansky's protuberance. Very rarely, you know, teratomas can contain. Uh, component which is very well organized and can look like a fetus of course poorly formed fetus and these teratomas are referred to as homunculus or fetiform teratomas microscopically what you find is evidence of structures which are derived from various germ cell layers structures derived from ectoderm structures derived from endoderm and structures derived from mesoderm can be seen depending upon the component of the teratomas so the cyst wall in the case of mature cystic teratoma, is often stratified squamous epithelium with appendages like you know hair follicles as you see here and sebaceous glands. So derivatives of ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm can be seen in variable proportions. Like for example, see you can see that this is a stratified squamous epithelium, and that's a very classical pilosebaceous unit. So mesoderm derivatives like adipose tissue can be seen here cartilage can be seen here endoderm derivatives like you know you find these glands thyroid tissue intestinal epithelium this smooth muscle which is basically a mesoderm derivatives so basically in a given case of teratoma histologically you find you know components of germ cell derivatives though these are germ cell tumors they can also be incorporated with a surface epithelial tumor for example dermoid cysts you know they are sometimes incorporated within the wall of mucinous cyst adenomas very rarely dermoid cysts can undergo malignant transformation that's around one percent of cases of dermoid cysts can undergo malignant transformation and the malignancy is usually squamous cell carcinoma but you know you can also see other cancers like thyroid carcinomas melanomas etc so majority of the cases these are cystic in nature but very rarely they can also be entirely solid so that was about mature teratoma which is benign now let's move on to understand the monodermal or highly specialized teratomas so these are very rare tumors often found in postmenopausal women most often the tumors are unilateral there are different types of monodermal or specialized teratoma which are struma ovary and carcinoid okay so struma ovary means basically these are the tumors which are composed entirely of mature thyroid tissue which can be functional and if functional they can cause hyperthyroidism the next important one is a carcinoid which arises from the intestinal tissue which again may be functional and if functional they produce carcinoid syndrome because they produce excess of serotonin now the combination of struma ovary and carcinoid is called strumal carcinoid which contains both components of thyroid as well as this carcinoid so these are the three entities which belongs to monodermal or specialized teratoma. What are these? Struma ovary, carcinoid and strumal carcinoid. Now moving on to the immature teratoma which is also referred to as malignant teratomas. These are teratomas which contain embryonal or immature fetal tissue component. Right? They are often found in prepubertal adolescents and young women mean age of presentation is around 18 years the immature elements can originate in any of the three embryonic layers i mean it can be you know it, the immature element can arise from ectoderm endoderm or mesoderm okay in ectoderm it is predominantly the neurectoderm so immature neuroepithelium which is the most common immature element which is seen in immature teratomas the next most common is immature cartilage and you can also very rarely find immature gut epithelium. So this is an immature neuroepithelium, right? So this is what you see. Sometimes you can find these rosettes. So the presence of rosettes indicates that you're looking at, you know, immature neural tissue. That's how during the process of development, you know, you can find these neural tube-like elements. So immature teratoma, they are often bulky tumors. They are very smooth to irregular external surface. On microscopically, any three germ cell components can be immature. What I mentioned earlier, right? It can be immature neuroepithelium or immature cartilage or immature gut epithelium, right? So whatever it is, the grading of immature teratoma, okay, is based on the proportion of tumor which is comprised of immature neuroepithelium. 
So how are these tumors graded? They are graded into low grade and high grade tumors. Low grade is also referred to as grade 1 tumors, whereas grade 2 and grade 3 tumors are referred to as high grade immature malignant teratomas. So, how do you grade these into grade 1, 2 and 3? It's based on the presence of immature neurectodermal tissue, what I told you earlier. So, if you find, you know, immature neurectoderm, one or more foci in any slide, in less than one low power field, that is grade 1. If you find this immature neurectoderm in 1 to 3 low power fields, it's grade 2. If you find this immature neurectoderm in more than 3 low power fields, it is called high grade. Right? So, this is how you grade immature malignant teratoma based on the presence of immature neuroectoderm or immature neuroepithelial tissue. So, these tumors grow very rapidly, frequently penetrate the capsule. They spread either locally or distant spread. Low grade tumors, which are grade 1 tumors, have excellent prognosis, whereas grade 2 and grade 3, which are high grade tumors, they are often treated with adjuvant chemotherapy. So, even after the treatment, the chances of recurrence is quite common in these cases. So, that's all about today's session. We looked into the uh, understanding the concepts of teratoma, the classification of teratoma and the morphological features of each of these teratomas. So, that's it for today. In the next session, I will discuss another important category of ovarian tumors that's sex cord stromal tumors. So, till then, stay tuned. If you have liked this video, hit the like button, do comment, don't forget to subscribe if you are new to this channel and do share if you find this content useful. Thank you.